And in the Texas Surf Q&A Club, I'd like to welcome you to our IndyCar Q&A. I am joined uh, this afternoon by the number 83, Charlie Pickle of North Nordisk Chip Ganassi Racing. To my left, your right, and then... And number 67, driving for Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing, Joseph Newgarden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very informal, so please participate as much as you like. I'm going to talk to them for a couple minutes, and then we'll have plenty of opportunities for fan questions, autograph pictures, all the fun stuff that Joseph and Charlie can give you. So I want to start with both of you and kind of open it up and kind of explain to the fans of how you both became race car drivers and... Uh, wound up in the Eyes Out IndyCar series. And Charlie, we'll go ahead and start with you. I, uh, I won a drawing competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, I started in go-karts. I started racing go-karts when I was eight. I grew up watching IndyCar and open wheel racing because my dad's an engineer and designed race cars. Uh, in fact, designing cars that won the 500 in 1980, 1982. Um, I went through 16, got into cars, and never looked back. So. Uh, you know, worked my way up racing Europe for five years, moved back to the U.S., and it's my second season in the Eyes Out IndyCar Series. Hey, Mr. Newgarden. Uh, mine's boring as well. I started in go-karts like Charlie. I wanted to be like a train conductor when I was younger, so that didn't work out. Um, or a superhero. I uh, don't you know, you money. Um, so I started when I was 13 because my dad would not allow me to have a go-kart when I was younger. And I just wanted something motorized, if anything, like an ATV, dirt bike, whatever I could get, and he wouldn't let me have anything. So um, when I was 13, he finally allowed me to, to try my hand at go karting, and then you know I ended up ended up sticking with it. I used to play ba baseball and basketball when I was younger, so a lot of ball and stick sports. And um, you know, when, once I started racing, that kind of just took over from everything, and somehow I ended up in the eyes of any car series. So pretty crazy. Interesting stories. Now, both of you are younger drivers, and Charlie, your second year, Joseph, your first. So you kind of represent a younger generation, a new generation of IndyCar drivers. Talk about what it's like uh, to kind of experience racing in the Eyes on IndyCar Series and your experiences so far. Well, I'm sure Joseph can talk about it being his first year, but last year I was surprised at how much commitment there were off the racetrack. I mean, driving the race car, it was the smallest part of the transition, uh, for me at least. You know, on, on the racetrack, there's still a couple of pedals, four wheels, an engine, and a steering wheel. Okay, you're going faster uh, than any of the lights car, which both Joseph and I came out of, but the amount of off-track commitments, the, the recognition of the racetrack, the media, the autograph sessions, you know, the, just the size of the field you're playing on for lack of a better analogy, was, was something that shocked me. I mean, the first couple of race weekends, I remember arriving at the racetrack and then the weekend flying by and leaving the racetrack. I mean, it, it happened so quickly. It was like sensory overload. Um, and, and this year, you know, things started to slow down a little bit, um, and I've been able to sort of catch up and, and feel like I do a little better job remembering what happens during a race weekend. Joseph? Yeah, I, I think I turned into kind of a jerk this year. I, and I, I try not to be mean, but I just, you know, I, I, you get so frustrated because there's so much to do and so much you have to do. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's all fun stuff. It's great. It's, it's awesome to be a part of everything, but it, it can be a lot. You know, you, you really just think, well, a race car driver, they have the easiest lifestyle and they get to drive race cars and it's the coolest thing ever. And that is all true. But, yeah, there is a lot of work that goes into it as well, and you know Charlie knows it very well. He's one of the best at it, and um, it's just so much that you have to be used to. And, and certainly, like he said, being my first year, I didn't really realize how how much it was going to be, and it made you kind of mean sometimes. So um, a lot to get used to, but you know it's, it's it's all fun at the end of the day. And I think getting used to it is is all part of the process. You know, going through that first year and figuring out how it works, and it's just getting better at it over the years is what it's all about. You both are on a strong stretch right now. Charles, you had consecutive top tens, had a strong run in Indy. Joseph, you were strong in Indy, actually qualified second to Long Beach. Um, so you guys are right there on the verge of kind of punching it through. 
and two capturing victories. How does that happen? Well, I think you have to consistently set yourself up inside the top ten and qualify well, have races where you're consistently finishing in the top ten, and from there, you know, it's a natural progression into the top five. And once you're sort of consistently in the top five, then you're mixing it up for programs and wins. Um, and, and taking that next step is just kind of understanding everything that goes into it and taking advantage of those opportunities and knowing when to, to take those big risks for the podium that we're in. Because it's not always, when someone's going to pass you, sometimes discretion is a better part of valor and, and you know, lifting, giving up the position early in the race, but getting it back and then some late in the race is more important. So there's, there's a lot more race management in a longer race, especially in a race like 500, which is so long and so difficult mentally um, that, that you have to stay on top of it and stay focused and keep working with your team. It's, you know, if someone who has a good car at the beginning of the race doesn't always have the car to win at the end. Uh, so you have to keep working. And even tonight, you'll see cars get better throughout the race and cars get worse throughout the race. And you just have to make sure you're one of the guys that starts well and gets better. Joseph? Yeah. Um, you know, for us, it's been, it's been really frustrating almost. You know, I, I'm so proud of the, the group that I drive for, Sarah Pedrava Racing. They, they do such a good job. I mean, they really do. They, they build fast cars, they build reliable race cars, and I don't think they've done much wrong. Um, you know, we've been knocking on the door as far as, you know, finishing well, and it hasn't come yet. We just have not had, you know, the brakes. We have, I haven't done a good enough job as well in, in a lot of the races, and, and everything's just not falling our way. And, and a lot more in IndyCar, everything's got to go right, you know, to a certain extent, a lot more than the Junior Series. And, um, you know, for us, we just haven't caught those breaks that we needed, and even this weekend. You know, we lost an engine in, qual in um, practice, and we didn't get to qualify this weekend, so we're starting to bash, and that's really not, not the end of the day around this place, but, you know, it's just all those little things that have been hitting us, I think, but um, as far as our team, they, they've done an unbelievable job. They've built really fast cars, I mean, there's, there's no question that, I think people have seen that. Each round that we've gone through this year, they just say, well, you know, they can build a quick car for sure. We just got to start getting some strong results behind us. And I think that will come. You know, everything's kind of cycled out, um, you know, throughout the year. And sometimes you get a bad cycle, and we're certainly in one right now. So I think once we get through it and things start to turn around a little bit, I think we're going to have some very strong results at the bottom. Now, Charlie, you um, are a very unique uh, race car driver because you race with um, diabetes. Talk about, um, and that ties into your sponsor as well. Let's talk about how you maintain that on the racetrack, on the racetrack, and your sponsor as well. Well, about four and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and, and you know, in, in trying to get back in a race car, I looked for not just other athletes, but other racing drivers at, at an elite level with diabetes, and there wasn't another driver that I could call and ask how to do this. Um, so it's been a great collaboration between not only my race team, you know, my personal healthcare team, uh, but my family as well as my title partner, Nova Nordis, to come up with a management routine that allows me to get back in the car uh, consistently, intelligently, and safely, um, and allows me to go out and, and do the best job possible behind the wheel. Um, and you know, I feel really lucky to have a partner on the car it means a product that I use every day to stay healthy. I mean, it, it's not, you know, a choice of mine that if I get to or, you know, choose not to use that cell phone provider or that oil or that fast food chain, this is something I need every day. So it, it's really personal um, and it's a lot of fun to, to share that story. And, and some of the best, the best parts of, of my life in, as a racing driver, other than driving a race car, getting to meet all the people out there with diabetes who come to the racetrack or bring their kids to the racetrack and you know, I get to tell my story and hear their stories because it's, it's really their stories from the diabetes community that inspire me when I'm on track. A very cool story indeed. Now Joseph, maybe not as interesting as Charlie, but tell something you need about yourself. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. One thing you may not know about Joseph Newgarden, you should never play cards with this kid. <laughs> Wise man over here. He knows. And we actually have a good time. We have card nights a lot in Indianapolis between like you know, him, Inch Cliff, myself, a bunch of other drivers, whoever we can find really. So um, that's, that's a lot of fun. We, 
you know, anything interesting about this. Of course he thinks it's funny. He keeps cleaning up and taking all our time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's right. That is right. Yeah, that, that is exactly right is what's happening. I have to go one day on the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen. The trade talk. See, I told you to talk about that whole cycle deal. Coming back around. Um, you know, I don't know what's very interesting about myself. Uh, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. That's very unusual um, for a guy to come from Nashville to, to get into open wheel racing. At least that's what the whole world thinks, apparently. Everyone asks me that question. Um, but it doesn't really matter where you come from, I guess. Uh, my mom's from Denmark. That's interesting, right? Hey, come on. Give it up. Give up these Danish. Make excellent Danish treats. Um, that's from New York, so I got a little bit of flavor there. Um, you know, I don't know really too much more interesting about me. I'm not really a super interesting guy. You know, I try and keep it pretty even keel. So I apologize. I have nothing entertaining to tell all of you fine folks today about myself. But there you go. Any questions from the audience? Questions for Joseph or Charlie? I got a question for both of you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, attending the Indy 500 this year, the Indy Lights race and the Indy 500 were two of the best Indy car races I've seen in a long, long time. The one disappointing factor was you guys go to the Yelp, ending a race on the Yelp. Now I understand that the uh, Indy 500 last lap, but the Indy Lights, that was such a heck of a race for all those laps and the five laps left. You know, they finished under the yellow. I, I just, I think from a fan point of view, they would like to see the, uh, you probably can do a green light checker like right NASCAR, but maybe a five lap shootout or, or something to that effect that I don't know what I, I, I can definitely see what you're saying from a fan point of view, but I can also see it from a driver point of view. Because that same situation happened last year in Indy Lights, where the Indy Lights race um, finished under yellow. And I actually ended up winning the thing. But I didn't really feel so great about winning the thing because I won it under yellow. So I think also from a driver's point of view, it's not that great. You know, you want to win a race fair and square under green flag conditions. Um, like you earn the thing. And, and when you finish under yellow and you win, it doesn't mean you didn't earn it, but I think it takes away a little bit from it as well. So I can I can relate to that on both sides, but I don't really know what the solution would be. I can I can only say that I can relate that it's not the coolest finish. And, and I agree that it's, I mean, you want to see the guys racing wheel to wheel coming to the checker. The challenging things, especially in your life without them refueling, is the teams fill the car for you know, the amount of laps in the race. And if you, you add, you know, a five-lap shootout or anything like that, you know, you then have to fuel the car for that. And, and it, I think, for me, it's a little arbitrary um, and, and creates, you know, ideally, we don't crash in the last five laps and we finish under green. You know, but when you're going that hard, sometimes it happens. And in the 500, you know, to, to have a crash, you know, turn one on, on the white flag lap on lap 199 is, is a shame, but safety-wise, there's, I mean, we couldn't race back to the start finish line. I mean, when you're going that fast, it's just not, not smart for us to be, you know, doing 220 miles an hour with the brake on the racetrack. Uh, I mean, it was hairy enough, I, I was in, like, eighth or ninth in line when Sato did the goal at the end of the race this year. You know, and, and my car came in with you know debris chunks out of the paint down on one side just from you know bits of carbon fiber in the air. So safety wise it had a challenge. And as Joseph said, I agree. I just don't know what a good solution is because there there are some some challenges, you know, especially with the lights and the lack of fuel. Questions from the audience? Kind of a two-part question. Is there a rule out there that says that all race drivers have to be cute? Easy, man. Okay. I've been a, I've been watching racing a long time. I'm an old uh, champ car fan, all way back. But since you guys are new at it, do you have any preference to the old as opposed to the road courses? Absolutely not. not. Now I don't. I, I thought last year when I drove in Indy Lights that um, I wasn't going to like the ovals and I wasn't going to be very good at them. So I had to put all my priority on the road and street course side. 
Um, but then I found that, you know, I was pretty decent at yoga, and I also really enjoyed